We all know how to write the equation of a line in two-dimensional space. You know, we just need the slope of the line and a point, and then we can use point-slope form. But how do we write the equation of a line in three-dimensional space? And so it turns out that they are best represented using vector equations. So to illustrate this concept, I'm just going to do it in 2D because 3D is too hard to draw. But the concept is the same. So say we are given an, a point A on, that we know is on the line. And so we're going to refer to A by its position vector. Notice how I made A into a vector. So A is the position vector from the origin to this point that we know is on the line. So once we have a point, we only need one more piece of information to completely describe this line. And that is a vector which is parallel to the line. Any vector that is parallel to the line we can use. And this is called the direction vector of the line because it's, well, it's pointing in the direction of the line. And so let's say this vector v, which has components a and b, is parallel to this line. So we have a point on the line and we have a vector parallel to the line. That's all we need to make our vector equation. Because notice that any point on this line can be represented as the addition of vectors a and some multiple of v. Because if we multiply v by some scalar, then it can span the entire line. And then if we draw the position vector from the origin to the end of v, which is, you know, the addition of a and v, then we can get the position vector for any point along this line. So a vector equation is going to give us the collection of all of the points that make up this line. So we're going to call that scalar that we can multiply by v the parameter of the equation, which is going to be t. You can use any letter you want. So if the vector uh, t represents the, all of the points that make up the line, then every point on the line can be written as a plus some t multiplied by v. And this extends into three dimensions. You know, our vectors are just going to have three components now. And if we only want a segment of the line, all we have to do is limit the domain of t. We just have to figure out which values of t are the line segment that we want. So for example, we could say t has to be between 0 and 1. And then we would only get the line segment that has t values between 0 and 1. So if we wrote out the components of all of these vectors in this equation, remember that a t is just standing for any point that is on the line, so x, y, and z. And then a is our initial point that we know is on the line. And then v is a direction vector. It's pointing parallel to the line with components a, b, and c. So notice that this is the same thing as writing out three separate equations, one for x, one for y, and one for z. So these three equations are called the parametric equations of the line. So we basically separated the vector equation into its separate three components. And there's one more system that we can use to represent the line. So given a point on the line, then there must be some single value of t that generates that point. So, you know, for example, let's say the point 2, 3, 1 is on the line. Then there must exist some value of t, the parameter, that when we plug in t to the vector equation, we get that point. 2, 3, 1. So it wouldn't make sense if we had to plug in different t values for x, y, and z to generate a single point on the line. Which means that we can solve for t 
in each of the parametric equations and set them equal to each other. And so the three equations that we get from doing this are called the symmetric equations of the line. So to end, we're going to look at a simple example. So say we have these two points A and B, and we want to find a line that is going through these points. So remember what we need is an initial point that we know is on the line, and then any vector which is parallel to the line, which is going to be a direction vector. So we can take either of these two points, A and B, to be an initial point. So let's just take A. So our initial point is 2, 4, 3. And then as a direction vector, we can take the vector which points from point A to point B, you know, or the vector that points from point B to point A. Because we know that each of these vectors must be parallel to the line. You know, since points A and B are both on the line, the vector pointing between them must be parallel to the line. So the vector from A to B is 3, negative 2, negative 2. If you added that to A, you'd get B. So now we have our initial point and our direction vector, so we can write the vector equation. It's just going to be initial point plus a parameter t times the direction vector. And that represents every point along this line. So our parametric equations, we just write out three separate equations for the x, y, and t, x, y, and z. And then for our symmetric equations, we just solve for t in each of these equations. So we have the vector equation, the parametric equations, and the symmetric equations of our line.